Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another skull clean video. No specific critter on this one. I just got back from a whole bunch of traveling, filming hunts here and there, and I got a buddy that uh, runs a hunting operation. He's like, hey, dude, I've got a freezer full for you. Come get them. So I got 14 heads to do today, and I'm going to kind of run this big production style of doing it. I have to get them done today. I had a freezer that's failed. First things first, I'm just going to get my water started. That way I can kind of tend to these as I'm putting them in the mix. Uh, welcome back y'all hey I am trying to do a better job of just filming what happens on the day to day I've got this thing in my head where it has to be this perfect video and so many of you comment saying hey if you put it up we'll watch it so this is what's going on today this crazy pile of sheep and goats and pigs I gotta get done so today we're gonna start with an Angora goat I've got three of them I'm just gonna skin them. Rule number one, you all know it if you've been here before. If not, that rule is remove all the meat and tissue before you boil. I put these little locking tags on their horns. I get them from Uline, the company's Uline, just like the letter U. They're like nylon locking tags. I love them. They help me separate one from the other. And with horned animals, I just drop them right down into clear water and bring them to a boil. My goal is to knock those horns off, cut the cores, and get them ready for a big old power wash. Okay, I got the first five critters in the pot. I don't want to do any more than that because it's going to put too much oil in that pot. It's just the nature of it. So I'm going to do them five at a time. Ultimately, black horn sheep are much, much softer skulls, softer horns. So that's going to be the first sheep to come out and get the horns knocked off. Then I'll pull the rest out, get them washed, and we're good to go. A real quick side note, something I do quite often is when you get that boil going and you get that foamy goo that's brain and fats, I'll take a garden hose and just whoosh, just blow that stuff off the top of the boil because it's on the pot and then I pull the skulls out one by one. I don't know if it helps, I just like it not being on there and getting around the horns. Step two on sheep and goats, take a sand hammer and thump them horns off. There is no real easy way to remove horns. Just thump the base of that horn and then twist in the direction it would come off. You're gonna work at it until it comes free. Then you cut those horn cores with a sawzall or whatever. Give your horns a real good wash in and out, soak them in water, and then put that skull back in the pot of boiling water. That's more work than it appears. The next step, we're gonna take a power washer and we're gonna wash into every hole and every orifice in this skull. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, we're gonna make it go away. Let's do some washing.
y'all catch that I changed skulls on you there? Yeah, we went from a sheep to a pig. Like I said, there's 14 skulls and there's just a little bit of footage. So just wash them till they're clean. This is a look at that sheep. The next step is I'm gonna stick a screwdriver in his ear canal and pop out his auditory bull. Then I'm gonna take a 5 8 wafer bit. I'm gonna wallow out that hole nice and clean. And then I'm gonna get ready for the color batch. All right, I'm just gonna use this now as a quick refresher. So I did that first batch, I got them all washed up, and then I just got into this mode of doing it and not filming. Classic me. So here's a real fast look at getting the pot prepared on the next batch. And then the part I get questions about more than anything, how do you whiten? It's literally in every video. And I know that sometimes we get different nationalities and languages, it's hard to comprehend. So I've written it in the description, but ultimately I'm mixing hydrogen peroxide and water. You can get your peroxide through beauty developer or pool supplies, it doesn't matter. I like to just dilute that peroxide some. The mix itself depends on the strength of the product, the age of the animal. It's very complicated to explain. So just mix some peroxide with some water. Start with 70% water, 30% peroxide. Just start there as a general rule. Then with the skull in the pot, bring it to a boil and turn off the heat. That's gonna whiten and degrease that skull beautifully then pull it out of the pot, wash off any loose extra debris, any piece of skin or whatever, put it back in the peroxide to make sure all the chemical hits that bone and then pull it out and let it dry. All right, here's the pro tip from a guy that's not completely a pro yet. If it's a hot day and you've done this many skulls, you get so much odor and fats and stink, you're gonna find some flies. I put those skulls in front of a fan to dry and then I will literally just give a big O spray of bug spray of some sort. And man, it will kill those flies and keep them off and not hurt anything about those skulls. Just give them a spray, get those flies gone. You don't want them laying in a wet horn core or some little area in that skull, spray them. Okay, so yesterday I told you I was gonna do three batches. Um, they weren't super oily, so I wound up doing two batches of seven. There's 14 skulls here. <laughs> Apparently there's skulls on my face. Uh, and I think a lot of people wonder, how in the world do you know what goes with what? Every animal is unique and they go together like a ring and pinion. It's an automotive term. They only go together one way. So I started dry fitting and then forgot to record. So here's where I'm at. Everything that was facing this way was the first batch. Everything that's facing that way is the second batch. And I kept the horns sec separate. These three heads all have different diameter bases. Anyway, first things first. I will dry fit these and then put them all together. But I'm gonna blow out every single one of these to make sure I don't have any gnats moisture, whatever. Because it's real easy to get them in there. You'll notice now that I don't let anything dry that's not in front of a fan. Nothing. When I was, when I took them off and I couldn't deal with them right then, they were all underwater. I don't want there to be any way for any critter to get in these things. Soak them or put air on it. Most critters don't like air. I think I might have just done it first try. For sure. See how well it fits together? There's no forcing. I've gone completely to screwing horns on. No bondo.
Now, I know some of this may seem contradictory to what you've seen in the past. Small modifications. The screws help me keep costs down for this particular end user, the guy I'm doing the skulls for. I don't mop and glue the inside of the horn anymore because sometimes it creates moisture inside. And then once I've got them all wrapped up, I just set them out to dry. You are going to hate the ending of this video because this is the last piece of footage I got. Y'all, I delivered all of those skulls and just didn't close the video because I'm notorious for that. So I did have an Angora just sitting around just to show you how cool this little critter is. Uh, it's small in comparison to those other ones, but I wanted to be able to at least close the video. We're going to do it with Mr. Beaks. Hey. Hey. It's been forever since everybody's got to say hello. Great day. Coolest critter in the whole world. Sit. Hold it like this. What do you think? Look good? Thank you for watching.